Today, we embark on a mathematical treasure hunt for one of the rarest objects in number theory. We seek all prime numbers p, where p squared divides 2 to the power of p minus 2. This deceptively simple condition conceals a profound mystery that has captivated mathematicians for over a century. Before diving into theory, let's build intuition by testing the first few primes. This hands-on approach will reveal just how restrictive our condition really is. Starting with the smallest prime, p equals 2. We need to check whether 4 divides 2 squared minus 2. Computing 2 squared gives us 4, so we're asking whether 4 divides 4 minus 2, which is 2. Since 4 does not divide 2, p e equals 2 fails our test. Next, p equals 3. We check whether 9 divides 2 cubed minus 2. 2 cubed equals 8, so we need 9 to divide 8 minus 2, which is 6. 9 does not divide 6, so p equals 3 also fails. For p equals 5, we need 25 to divide 2 to the 5th minus 2. 2 to the 5th is 32, so we're checking whether 25 divides 32 minus 2, which is 30. 25 does not divide 30. The pattern is clear. These special primes are incredibly rare. Since p equals 2 fails our test, we can focus exclusively on odd primes. This allows us to make a crucial observation that will transform our approach. Let's factor out the common factor of 2 from our expression. This seemingly simple step will unlock the entire problem. Our condition becomes, p squared must divide 2 times the quantity, 2 to the power of p minus 1 minus 1. The greatest common divisor of p squared and 2 is 1, meaning they are coprime. Therefore, for the divisibility to hold, p squared must divide the second factor entirely. Our problem reduces to this elegant condition. Now we face the real challenge, analyzing this condition. The key is to understand the deep connection between exponents and multiplicative order. Since p is an odd prime not dividing 2, Fermat's little theorem tells us that 2 to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p. Let d be the multiplicative order of 2 modulo p. This is the smallest positive integer such that 2 to the d is congruent to 1 modulo p. Therefore, d divides p minus 1, and we can write p minus 1 as m times d for some positive integer m. From the definition of order, 2 to the d minus 1 is divisible by p. In equation form, 2 to the d equals 1 plus j times ep for some integer j. Now comes the brilliant part. We'll use this representation of 2 to the d in a binomial expansion to analyze our target expression. First, we substitute our expression. 2 to the power of p minus 1 becomes 2 to the power of md, which is 2 to the d, all raised to the power m minus 1. Now we make the key substitution, replacing 2 to the d with 1 plus j times p. The binomial theorem gives us this expansion. Each term involves jp raised to increasing powers. Evaluating the first two binomial coefficients, m choose 0 is 1, and m choose 1 is m. Subtracting 1 eliminates the first term, leaving us with this expression. We can factor out p squared from all terms except the first, giving us this form. Therefore, our target expression has this elegant structure, a term involving m, j, and p, plus something divisible by p squared. Now we can analyze when p squared divides our expression. This is where the mathematics becomes truly beautiful. We need p squared to divide this entire expression. The second part is already divisible by p squared by construction. Since p squared equals p times p, this is equivalent to requiring that p divides the product m times j. Since p is prime, if p divides a product, it must divide at least one of the factors. So either p divides m or p divides j. 
Let's examine the first possibility. Can P divide M? Recall that M equals P minus 1 divided by D, where D is at least 1. This means M is at most P minus 1, which is strictly less than P. Since M is a positive integer less than the prime P, P cannot divide M. Case 1 is impossible. This leaves only case 2. P must divide J. Remember that J equals 2 to the D minus 1 divided by P. So P divides J if and only if P squared divides 2 to the D minus 1. We've discovered a necessary condition, but mathematics demands we prove it's also sufficient. This final step will complete our characterization. We've shown that if P squared divides 2 to the power of P minus 1 minus 1, then P squared must divide 2 to the D minus 1. But is the converse true? If P squared divides 2 to the D minus 1, does it automatically divide 2 to the power of P minus 1 minus 1? The key insight is this fundamental property. Whenever D divides P minus 1, the quantity 2 to the D minus 1 divides 2 to the power of P minus 1 minus 1. Therefore, if P squared divides 2 to the D minus 1 and 2 to the D minus 1 divides 2 to the power of P minus 1 minus 1, then by transitivity of divisibility, P squared divides 2 to the power of P minus 1 minus 1. The converse is proven. We have established complete equivalence. Our original condition is satisfied if and only if P squared divides 2 to the order D minus 1. Our mathematical journey has led us to one of number theory's most mysterious objects. What we've discovered has a famous name. A prime P satisfying this extraordinary condition is called a Wieferich prime named after German mathematician Arthur Wieferich. Here's the stunning revelation. Despite intensive computational searches, only two Wieferich primes have ever been discovered. These precious mathematical gems are 1,093 and 3,511. Let's verify our first solution. For P equals 1,093, P squared equals 1,194,649. And indeed, 2 to the power of 1092 minus 1 is divisible by this enormous number. The mathematics checks out perfectly. Therefore, the complete answer to our original question, the only known primes satisfying our condition, are 1093 and 3511. Our journey ends with one of mathematics' great unsolved mysteries. Are there infinitely many Wieferich primes, or might these two be the only ones in existence? This question remains tantalizingly open. Thank you for joining me on this incredible mathematical adventure. From a simple divisibility condition, we uncover deep connections to multiplicative order, binomial expansions, and one of number theory's rarest objects. If you enjoyed exploring the mysteries of Wieferich primes, please give this video a like and subscribe for more deep dives into the beautiful world of mathematics. Until next time, keep questioning and keep discovering.